Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Autos. So this video is like a beginner's guide to owning and operating a Nissan Leaf. I've been meaning to make this video for well over three years now, uh, and this Leaf is uh, going out tomorrow, so I thought I'd better just get out here and uh, make this video. So this would be helpful if you're a first time owner and driver of a Leaf, and it just shows you the basics of what you need to know. Um, you know, you still have to read the owner's manual to get to grips with all of it, but this just gets you the basic and gets you in the car and driving it straight away. I would just say I apologise for the uh, the wind. I hope you can hear me. It is a rather windy day, but uh, this is the only time I can get out here and do it. So, firstly, let's talk about the keys, locking and unlocking. Um, this particular model is a Tecna model, so you have... Um, remote keys so you just need to keep the key in your pocket or in your handbag you don't need to use the buttons and when you want to get into the car you just push the button here to unlock it and then the same when you leave you can push the button and it will lock all the doors you can also do the same with the little button here underneath when you're going to release the boot and as long as the key is on you it will unlock you can of course just use the lock and unlock buttons on the key the old-fashioned way and the keys well the car detects whether the keys are inside or outside the car so to start the car again you just leave the keys in your pocket or your bag put your foot on the brake and you push the power button down here and then the vehicle starts so you have to leave it two or three seconds for it to uh, switch on and when it's on and ready to go you get this green go light up here a little picture of a car with arrows backwards and forwards and you get that on all evs you'll get some sort of green light or a ready light so i next just talk about the foot brake because the leaf has a foot brake rather than a hand brake so to release the foot brake you find a little pedal here and push it down and then let go and it will spring back up and to put the handbrake on you just push it down on the ratchet and then let go and it stays locked down so it's where your clutch would be on a manual car it's the um, same setup as you get in the mercedes-benz so the nice thing with these is if you're on a slope um, you can really put some pressure so when you're pushing it down you've got a lot more strength on your in your foot and your leg than you would if it was a, a conventional handbrake here so to pull away you would release the foot brake you keep your right foot on the uh, normal brakes and then this is your gear selector so you drive them like an automatic and uh, you've just got park reverse and drive just like an automatic but instead of having a, a, um, a stick shifter you've got this little knob so the way this works is to put it into drive you just pull it across and down and now that's in drive and you'll see here you've got the little symbols across and down it's drive and it's lit up and then also in your dash we have a d there so if i put it into reverse you'll see that changes to reverse so you just have drive and reverse so basically drive is down that way and reverse is up that way it's as simple as that and then when you want to put it into park when you stop you just press the P button and now that's in park and it shows you park up there on the screen. So um, I'll just quickly say when you come to stop the car and you want to put it in park what you must do when you're ever changing this is keep your foot on the foot brake. So when you want to stop the car you put your foot on the foot brake, you press park to park it, with your foot still on the foot brake then apply the parking brake, the you know foot brake, hand brake. Um, there's too many foot brakes here but anyway this is I'll, I'll call it your handbrake for now on so apply the handbrake and then let go of the normal brakes so the weight of the car is on the brakes in this case on the handbrake and not sitting in the not the weight of the car on the park and on the transmission so you always want the particularly on a slope you want the weight of the car to be held by the brakes and not by the transmission so i'll quickly explain the dash layout because the leaf dash is a little bit confusing because you get this split dash and two screens up here firstly let's look at the top screen this is simply your speed the uh, time and the outside temperature and this up here is a little uh, tree it's like a little fir tree or christmas tree and that promotes green driving it's a bit of a gimmick because it doesn't particularly work well because even if you drive these 
uh, pretty fast or uneconomically, you still grow a tree. But anyway, if you're the idea is is if you're driving uh, economically, you grow a tree and then you stack trees up, and it helps to promote green driving. Um, I'll also quickly explain. We've got a red exclamation mark up there. When you have a red or yellow exclamation mark up there, that's telling you something is wrong. And basically, you've got to look down on this dashboard to see what is wrong. And in this case, it's because we've got the handbrake on and we haven't um, put the seatbelt on. Um, and then on this screen, firstly, up here, we've got these dots. This is your power meter. So it's a bit like a rev counter on a traditional petrol or diesel car. So this is uh, one dot here is neutral. So we're using no power. And as you accelerate, you'll, you'll increase the amount of white dots in here. So, um, you know, the more dots, the more power you're using. So you want to drive with as few dots as possible. So um, really, you know, normally two or three, something like that. But if you stick your foot down, you'll see we use all the power. So, um, you know, drive as with as few dots as, uh, as you can to drive economically. And then when the dots are going into this bluey green, well, green section, this is showing your regen, your regenerative braking. So that's when you're slowing down the car and the electric motor turns into a generator and puts the charge back into the battery. And the more the green dots there, the more regen and the more charge you're getting back in the battery. Um, then over this side is your battery pack. So uh, effectively your fuel tank and the number of um, bars up here are showing you how full it is. So we've lost two bars, so we're roughly at um, uh, 80, 80, 90 percent, something like that. In here is your predicted range. You have to take this with a big pinch of salt because the range meters on all EVs can be pretty unreliable at times because it's based on how you were last driving. So if you drive the car particularly uneconomically the day before, for example, you're tearing down a dual carriageway on your way home and driving pretty fast, then the next day it's going to say, OK, well, this is how you were driving. Therefore, it's going to reduce the range because it's going to assume you're going to drive the same, um, whereas the car can't predict how you're going to drive. So, um, you know, sometimes it could be artificially low if it was particularly cold the day before or you drove particularly bad. And it doesn't mean that's how many miles you're going to get. It means that's what it's predicting if you drive the same. But of course, if you drive more economically, you're going to get more miles. And this will compensate as um, your battery reduces. And then the dots on the far side, the little bars on the far side, is showing you your battery state of health. So you've got 12 bars 12 out of 12 means your battery is good and as your battery degrades slowly these drop and then on the other side is your battery temperature um, the nissan leaf is the only ev that shows you battery temperature and uh, we've got a cold and a hot and um, if you're doing lots of motorway driving and the batteries you know you're draining the battery quickly and then you go and do a rapid charge um, it doesn't really get hot in this country but theoretically if you're doing lots of rapid charges and lots of fast driving and the battery was getting very hot then the, t the battery temperature might raise up a bit and if you got anywhere near the red then you would just have to stop and let the car cool down a bit or not do a rapid charge and just drive and let the air cool the battery pack um, but in reality in the uk this doesn't really ray go up much i've never really seen them go any anywhere past the middle um, and then we obviously got the mileage we've got our gears and then this screen in the middle we can change what's being displayed by using these buttons so we push that top button there which changes what's on the screen and I just saw it said 80% there and there was me guessing what that says and I hadn't read that but anyway so yes the battery is currently 80% because we've lost 20% of our capacity there um, so yeah using this button here we can scroll through various trips and settings there's our predicted uh, time it would take to return the battery to 100% if we plugged it into charge. Three hours, it's saying. That can also be quite inaccurate. And uh, when you plug it in, it might be saying three hours, and then after about um, half an hour charging, it will drop to an hour and a half, something like that. You know, it, it does again. It changes depending on um, what it's currently doing. And then this is your economy, the average economy. We're showing 3.8 here, which. Um, 
is isn't particularly economic but you know it's the middle of winter so yeah that's fair i suppose but on electric cars your economy is measured in miles per kilowatt hour whereas um, that's the equivalent of um, miles per gallon on a on a petrol car because obviously your energy is in kilowatt hours on an electric i'm not going to go through all the controls but the other key thing here is on the steering wheel here we have an eco switch and we've got a symbol up here an eco symbol there which shows when it's pressed so if i take eco off we've uh, got rid of the eco symbol there and the mileage is um, adjusted slightly there so what the eco does is it dulls the power to the motor so it doesn't give you full power um, and what that does is stops you accelerating quite so quick and it's all about reducing uh, energy consumption and increasing range uh, for normal driving, leaving an eco is fine because uh, these are hugely powerful cars, electric motor, you've got instant torque and you can really accelerate quick. In eco mode it puts it about the same uh, performance as a normal petrol car of similar sort of size. Uh, the other thing the eco does is it also dulls the power to the heating system because the heating system is the only other thing that takes power from your big traction battery underneath. So. Um, that traction battery underneath that's only supplying power to the electric motor driving the front wheels and your heater everything else all your lights wipers dash all the ecus in the car your stereo that is all being driven by uh, or being powered by a 12 volt battery up front just like a normal car so the only thing that um, makes a, an impact on range is um, driving economy driving style because that's driving the wheels and heater use so for normal driving you know you would typically keep it in eco because that just extends your range but in the winter if it's particularly cold and you want maximum heat out the heater then you would take it out of eco because that gives you full power to a heating system um, i'd also say when you're in eco if you need to overtake and you want full power if you just stick your foot to the floor on the accelerator you get, do get full power and it allows you to overtake safely so your wipers are just like any other car um, and you can adjust the sensitivity with the uh, twisty bit here it's no different to any other car your lights uh, in this case the lights are automatic so you can just leave it on auto and the lights will do their thing but again this is no different to a normal car so down here we've got a, a range of buttons this one opens your uh, flap at the front to access the charge points this one is the uh, locking of your charge cable so you can lock your charge cable in or you can leave it in auto um, and that locks your charge cable until the charge is uh, has finished and then it will release the charge cable and that allows someone else to remove the cable from your car and then use the charger or you can just leave it in the middle and it's not locked this button is uh, to take off a charge timer so if you've got a charging uh, timing schedule set up in here then um, when you plug in you know for example you want to take advantage of a nighttime uh, cheaper energy tariff then when you plug in it's going to delay the charging until that nighttime tariff kicks in pressing this button will turn off any timer as it's got a little clock here and allow the vehicle to charge immediately this one is your front audio system so these play a tone out the front when you're driving below i think 19 miles an hour um, and that allows pedestrians and cyclists and things to hear you you can turn that off and then the car is silent but it will always default to on every time you start up and drive so that's a, a temporary thing and it allows you just to um, go into stealth mode if you've got a heated steering wheel you can switch it on down here the heated steering wheel is really nice in the winter and there's your traction control switch so on that point with heated steering wheels and in this case this car's got heated seats as well so it's very efficient to heat up your contact points uh, particularly if you use um, preconditioning where you can set up your uh, timer on your heating so while the car's still connected to the house it will get ready in the morning and melt all the ice off the windows and precondition the car um, you can then probably find you can do your journey without the heating on and just use the heated seats and heated steering wheel 
um, because uh, it's it's a lot more efficient and that's running uh, off the 12 volt at the front as I've said and then you can maybe reduce or even turn off your heating system because the car's already warm so that's a nice little trick in the winter and it's very nice to get into a warm car in the winter and that preconditioning it will also do the same in the summer is it will cool the car down before you get in the car as well um, then lastly quickly the controls on the doors um, electric windows it's all pretty standard um, central locking you can disable the rear windows to stop kids playing with them and then this is your mirror adjustment and this folds in the mirrors there as well they're a little bit creaky because they don't get used much I'm not going to go into all the details how you use the um, sat nav and the radio and the phone all that sort of stuff it's pretty self-explanatory um, but what I would say is while the sat nav knows about charging points what I find on cars is it's never accurate enough because the um, the rollout of chargers in the UK is just huge. There's so many going in every month and sometimes the data about what connector they are isn't very accurate. So um, from experience, I pretty much ignore what's on here and I just use ZapMap on my mobile phone, find all the relevant charger information on that. And then if I want to route to a charger, I call up the postcode in ZapMap and then enter it in the SatNav and use that for um, navigating to a charger. Um, this one has a, a camera because it's a Techno model and we've got 360 degree cameras so when you're in reverse you can see out the back you can also see along the sides and out the front because the um, cameras are under the mirror and at the charge flap at the front. Um, these also have a single slot CD you can press the open tilt button there and you've got a single slot at the back there to put a CD in and then you push the button again there to close that. Uh, the heating system here is uh, climate control so you just press auto select your relevant temperature and just let it do its thing um, but as I said you want to try to keep the heating use to a minimum if you can if you want to preserve range because uh, the heating system will use something like um, I don't know 10 15 percent range in the winter something like that so to open the charge flap at the front you push that button as I said or you can also push this button here on the keys and let's just go around to the front there hold that down and then the charge flap then unlocks and this is your two charging ports this is your 50 kilowatt DC rapid port it's called a Chadamo port and this is what you would typically use on the motorway network and on the roadside to get that very fast 30 minute uh, rapid charge and this is your AC port which you would use when charging at home either on a home wall charger or using the granny cable or any um, slower public chargers that you would typically get in uh, supermarkets car parks um, and that sort of thing so here in the boot we've got our charge cables um, this car has got this accessory this um, boot uh, organizer um, this is our charge cable the charge cable if i can get this rubber cap off here the charge cables always have a type 2 at the charger end so your home charger and all public chargers are type 2 and are that um, type at the end and then on the Nissan Leaf this is called a type 1 connector so the car is that end and the charger is always that type so a lot of people get very worried about different connector types it's all pretty irrelevant really because the cable that comes with the car will always sort it out and all chargers are type 2 the only time you need to worry about charger connector types is when you're using that um, DC rapid charger because in this case it is a Chadamo connector so when you pull up to a uh, public rapid charger typically on a motorway network then you will have three types of connectors and you want the one to suit the car which in this case is the Chadamo and then here we have a portable charger we also call these granny cables so this is the same type 1 connector for the AC port at the front of the car and we now have a uh, three pin plug so you can charge this on a normal socket at home so when you're charging at home you want to make sure you're on a ring main socket ideally not on a spur 
because sometimes it can't take the constant drain of current. Um, and these draw 10 amp. So the car does take longer charging on one of those because it only draws 10 amp. Whereas when you're charging on a proper wall socket, it can draw up to 30 amp depending on the type of charger you've got on the car. So finally, I'll just quickly talk about driving style and uh, when you're driving an EV. So really you drive them like an automatic, but with an electric car, you want to use the regen and it's called regen braking, but that confuses a lot of people because it's not actually braking. It doesn't use the brakes at all. So with an electric car, when you press the accelerator, you're putting electricity into the motor that turns the wheels and you move along obviously as soon as you lift off the accelerator you're not putting electricity into that electric motor but that electric motor is still being spun because the car's going forward um, and at that point it instantly turns into a, uh, a generator or a dynamo and it then starts charging the battery and that's what's called regen regenerative braking so as the motor starts charging the battery the motor is slowing the car down and that's the braking effect it's not actually braking it's just a braking effect so you want to capitalize on that so um, with an EV if you're coming up to a bend or a corner or traffic lights or a roundabout or whatever and you want to slow down you read the road ahead a bit more lift off the accelerator and coast and while you're coasting you're slowing down but of course you're charging the battery and you want to do that as much as possible and put all that energy back in the battery pack because that extends your range if you don't and you just slam on the brakes um, it's perfectly fine of course but it's going to be uh, you're going to do uh, less miles per kilowatt hour and you're going to wear your brake pads because as soon as you um, touch the brakes you're um, losing your energy into friction and heat on the brake pads and you're wearing your brake pads out as well whereas you could have been putting it back into your battery so to get good range of an EV you want to just drive a little bit more gently read the road ahead and really use the regen to slow you down rather than the brakes of course if you need to touch the brakes you need to do an emergency stop or you're not slowing down enough fine you touch the brakes but if you can just read the road a bit more and uh, use the regen as much as possible it does make a big difference with your range uh, on the leaf you get this b mode and what that does is gives you um, adjustable regen so um, let's say let's put it into D and we're driving along and we can see we've got D here and we've coming up to a corner and you're slowing down but you're not quite slowing down enough and if you feel like you want to go for the brakes that's when you toggle it down again and it goes into the B mode and we can see a B here and what that does is it increases the regen and gives you um, more braking effect and it's putting more energy back in the battery and then when you come out of the corner you know if you want to drive most efficiently you take it out of b again and you're back into drive and we see here d so this is just a toggle it's going from drive to b drive to b it's as simple as that so the most efficient way of driving an ev is not to leave it in b mode you'll end up using more energy um, than doing that you drive in the normal drive mode and then you just use b mode like um a handbrake you know if you want a bit extra braking you toggle it into B you come out of the corner you take it out of B and that's the most efficient way of driving an EV I would also say the car sorts the brake lights out as well so if you're driving an EV particularly economically and you can drive these without ever touching the brake yourself and you do all your slowing down on the regen uh, the car still does put the brake lights on so when as soon as the car's slowing down the brake lights do come on so you don't have to worry about that so uh, the only other quick thing i'll quickly show you i said i'm not going to go into all the details of the infotainment system but to set the um, preconditioning so that's when you will set a timer and get your car to either warm or heat in the morning while it's still connected to the house and um, prepare the car before your drive just press the zero emission button here quick way into all your electric settings and you've got a charge timer and climate control timer so your charge timer is if you want to delay your charging to a certain time at night to take advantage of a cheap rate electricity tariff or maybe actually you just want to help the grid you know the grid struggles at that peak time in the evening so you could set your timer to 
11 o'clock in the evening something like that when everyone's gone to bed and that helps balance a good a little bit even though you won't get any saving of money unless you want a, a timed cheaper tariff and um, climate control timer that allows you just to tell the car every day of the week what time you're going to leave and the car will then precondition and get the cabin up to the right temperature or down to the right temperature depending whether it's summer or winter and as i said in the winter that makes a huge difference to the range if you can precondition the car get the cabin warm so you're not using the heating so much when you're driving and it's very nice because it melts all the ice off the windscreen and you no longer need to scrape ice off uh, before you leave Nissan Leafs don't have rear parking sensors they only have cameras so uh, if you're used to parking sensors and you're going to a Leaf that doesn't have them and it has the camera instead then it's actually quite easy to go and hit something because you're expecting the the beepers to kick in so just be aware that you've got to um, you know use your mirrors in your camera and the camera is here just on the handle it's worth every time particularly in the winter when the roads are mucky whenever you open the boot just rub your finger over the lens of the camera and that just gets the dirt off it and you can see properly out of it the other cameras are here under the mirrors just there and of course on the other side and the front camera if you've got it on a Tecna is there under the badge Another little thing I'll show you is the bonnet release is right down here. It's a bit difficult to see, um, but you should only ever need to go in the bonnet if you need to fill up your washer bottle um, or change your 12 volt battery.